Hello and welcome to the lessons of public enterprise management. Now we're going to study the features of public enterprises. What are the different features of all of any of the public enterprises which are very similar so that you can identify how they differ from the private sector. Uh, first of all, we have to see that the biggest government uh, owned companies are under the industries of finance, most importantly. And if you see, the major chunk is finance in any of the economy. Then we have the energy. Energy is the second important chunk that there is in any of the economy that falls under the public sector. Then we also have the motor vehicles and parts, telecommunication and engineering and construction. They are more privatized also, but mostly the finance and energy, they fall under the government sector. Now, some of the key characteristics of the public enterprises, number one is owned by the government. It is owned by the government, there is no private ownership, and when anything is owned by the government, then it is following only the government policy. Whatever the government policy is, the aim, objective, vision, mission, and anything, goals, whatever that organization has, they are the public policy the government has created because they're owned by the government. They're controlled and managed by the government also. The appointments that are done in these organizations, they are all approved by the government. They're all approved by the ministries. And then anyone who works in these organizations works over there. They have a distinct legal identity. Every organization has, as we all know through the corporate law, that any organization is supposed to have a legal identity and their distinct legal identity is that they are government owned um, they have a continuous succession. Uh, continuous su succession means that there is no permanent owner. Anyone can reach till the highest level, but then they have to retire and someone else has to take that uh, job or responsibility. And once they are done, they also have to retire. There is a better system in, in the public sector that the people who work in the government sector, they also get their pensions for their services. And there is a service motive why you're serving the public. The most important uh, uh, motive for any of the public enterprise is this. And then you also have a public accountability. Very important. Private sector does not have this. A private sector employee or an owner is not answerable directly to anyone until and unless they're doing something really wrong and it becomes a problem, they could answer. But in a public sector, the public enterprise is public accountable. So the public can question whatever their services are and their services have to improve according to the demands and the requirements of the public because they're serving for the public good. Then there's a belief of monopoly and the business objectives that are there. So these are some of the features that are very important to see that anything that you are doing is decentralized. It is not centralized to one aim, one objective or one person or one family. It is for the entire country. The uh, looking at the entrepreneurship cycle. Now, public sector also encourages entrepreneurship. It, it should not be considered because normally how it is considered is that innovation, entrepreneurship, anything new can only come in the private sector. The public sector is very basic. That's not the fact. The encouragement of entrepreneurship is there, but the at the same time, there is the whole cycle that is going on. You can be an entrepreneur, you can be very innovative, but you are only serving in a public sector where your time span is going to end at one point and after that someone else is going to take that place. So there are three phases that go on in this uh, entrepreneurship cycle. The first phase is need formation, which then goes to emergence of the entrepreneur and that leads to the end that is need resolution and evacuation of the entrepreneurs. Wherever there is a need, entrepreneurship is encouraged. Once that need is fulfilled, then that entrepreneurship is asked to leave or exit. So this is basically how it is. In the private sector, you can take the ownership, but in a public sector, you cannot take the ownership of anything that has been created to satisfy the need that is there. So when you look at the organizational structure, the need formation can lead to a centralization. But then the emergence of the entrepreneur leads to the decentralization and then 
the need resolution and evacuation of entrepreneur it leads to uh, towards the recentralization similarly when you look at the formalization we have the dominant rewards we have recruiting uh, we have government power and legitimacy <coughs> leadership and environment all of these in all of these areas all these three phases they are followed there is a need for that need an entrepreneur is required and that entrepreneur is in, encouraged and once that need is satisfied once a system has been established then that entrepreneur becomes part of that machinery of that cycle and then that new idea that innovation or that concept is then placed into the functioning of the public enterprise which is for everyone to perform then in any of the areas wherever there is a need when you look at the public enterprise and the digital economy because the public enterprise as we have understood that public enterprise does not just mean there is no innovation in it public enterprises are encouraging innovation they are encouraging most importantly technology this was basically let's say 20 or 50 years back this was the major difference technology was introduced when technology was introduced most of the private sector was adapting to it most of the private sector was going more on technology orientation rather than the public sector but now that gap has really uh, shortened and most of the public enterprises also are encouraging technology and digital economies so when you look at the traditional economy it was more of the factories high speed shops we had the transportation construction so on so forth all of these things most of the mostly in the 9 to 5 system of going to work sitting there and working more on the paper sifting was more of the concept of the public sector now moving towards the digital economy there are more data centers and cloud computing we have internet websites we have social media reviews we have working from home e learning e workshops a lot of things that are going digital by saving the environment saving time uh, increasing the productivity all of these things and everything that comes with the digital economy is also being accepted and adapted by the public enterprises also so the things that we need to remember are that the public enterprises are businesses with considerable government control and ownership the control and ownership the considerable government control and ownership is always there and that has to be there because these organizations or these enterprises they're created by the government so the control and ownership of the management of the production and even of the results they all are under the government public enterprises are critical for any country's development and prosperity um, given the worldwide trend towards liberalization privatization or the private sector is a lot encouraged and that should be encouraged because once they are encouraged it would create an economy of scale it would create a mixed economy which is the most important for any government or any country to develop so the pri uh, the private sector is a lot encouraged but the public sector should always be there and should be strengthened so that they can work together and working together they can create a better economy for any of the countries this brings us to the end of this lesson thank you